spiral bar chart plots a time-based data along a spiral path. This graph begins at the center of a spiral and then progresses outwards. Spiral plots are versatile and can use bars, lines, or points to be displayed along the spiral path. Spiral charts are ideal for showing large data sets, usually to show trends over a large time period. This makes spiral plots great for displaying periodical patterns. And in this tutorial, we are going to learn how to build spiral bar chart in Tableau. So without any further delays, let's get started. Welcome back, this is Gurpreet from Dataverse Canvas and in today's tutorial, we are going to learn about how to build a spiral bar chart in Tableau. As you can see here, I have plotted a spiral bar chart where each of these bars represents the sales on a particular date. So each bar is showing the spiral path for a particular date. So let's see how we can create this in Tableau. So first of all, let's connect to a data source. So in this scenario, I have already connected to sample superstore data set. But for data densification technique, I need to join it with an Excel spreadsheet where I have created a range. So range from zero to one. So what it will do is when I join this particular Excel spreadsheet with the data set itself, it will create two points. So let's, let's bring the data set first in. So I will connect to this one. I will go to my downloads where I have that spreadsheet saved. So I will connect to this one. And first of all, while connecting the data source with another data source, we need to create a join, right? And in this case, we need to open this dialog box so we can go into the old joining mode of the tables. So here I will bring the sheet one and drag it here. And I will simply create an inner join by creating a join calculation. So here I will simply type in one and I will do the same thing for the range table and type in one. What this will do is it will create a Cartesian join between these two tables. And you will see here we will have a range range column created with the value 0 and 1. So for each row, we have two rows now. Each row in orders, after joining with this sheet, we have two rows, one with the range value 1 and 0. We need this to create a data densification in between the points. So that's why we are using a range value for 0 and 1. So this, this chart is quite similar to my previous tutorial where we talked about um, radial chart. So it, the concept is quite similar. But instead of putting everything in one radial, we are just changing the values of x and y axis so that we create a spiral chart rather than just a one circle. So in order to do that, let's first start by creating a parameters. So our first parameter is spacing. So this spacing is used to create the space between different bars on the spiral path. So I will use it as an integer. You can use any other value. So in this case, I will be using three as a spacing value. But yeah, you can play around with this number if you want to increase or decrease the spacing. And the second one I will be creating is size. So again, this one will be a float uh, integer data type and I will start with 100 as a current value of a size. So once we have created these two parameters, we will start by creating an index calculation. So I will simply type in index and I will type in index function minus one. So what minus one does is that instead of starting indexing from one, I am trying to start indexing from zero. So click OK. And after that, we will create a calculated field for the range calculation. So range, which is zero and one. So I will simply right click and create a calculation on top of it. And I will give the name range. And here I will type in Windows Max. So Windows Max, and then I will get the maximum value from range. So I will remove this one. So what it is trying to do is 
it is using a windows max function and it will give me the maximum value from that window for the range which is 0 and 1. So once this calculation is created I will create another calculated field which will be a starting point calculation. So starting point instead of starting the chart from 0 0 x and y coordinate I want to start it from 10. You can start it from 5 or okay let's 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 try it from let's say 6 and that's our starting point instead of 0 0 I'm starting with 6 and then I will simply use index uh, calculation which we created and I will divide it by 100. So what it is doing is it's starting from 6 and with every point which is the index indexing the row so every point we are adding a fraction into it as we increase every point in the spiral path. So that's that's why we are doing this. So instead of starting from 0, 0, you can start from 6, 10, 20, whatever. So this is just a variable. You can adjust according to your requirement. So I will select OK. And now we need to create x and y coordinates. So before I jump into creating x and y coordinate, as I discussed in my previous tutorial, we have a standard equation of circle, which is x minus h square plus y minus k square equal to r square, where h and k are the or region or the center point of the circle and r is the radius. So using the Pythagoras theorem and the trigonometrical functions, we get to x and y coordinates where y is equal to r sine theta and x is equal to r cos theta. So we'll be using these two values or equations for x and y coordinates. So now let's go and create a x coordinate. So create a calculated field and type in x. So in this one, we need to make sure if the maximum value of a range function is equal to zero. So I will simply put it range. If this is equal to zero, then we need sine of radians and we will do the index index function which we have so that's that's basically our value but then we need to multiply that with the starting point so instead of using 0 0 we are using 6 right so I will put the starting point here else if the range value is 1 then what we need to do and then we'll simply type sine of radians and then again we will do the index function uh, index calculation which we created and then we will multiply that with the starting point plus one so why we are doing that we are simply adding one point if it is if the value of the range is one if it is zero we will keep it as a starting point so it's just to change the values of plotting so that it is plotted in a spiral way. So we got an error here, looks like it's the parentheses. So we are starting two here. Actually, we are starting three here and we are closing two. So I will do it this way. And we need sign of radiant. Instead of that, we need one more here. And that looks much better okay so we will simply click OK and I will duplicate that calculation for y-axis so it's the similar calculation but just the instead of sine we need to use cos so that's our x and y coordinates so once we have created that we will simply bring order dates to filter shell and I would like to select the year so you can select all the years or one year or two years so let's select 2019 in this case and then we will change the mark lab marks from automatic to let's say line chart and I will bring order date into Rochelle and I will make sure it's selected to exact date and I will show the missing values once we have that there I will bring it into detail shell so once we have that into detail shelf, I will bring the range value into path. And then I will bring x-axis to the column shelf. 
and y axis to the row shelf. So once we do that, we will simply change the compute using by order date for both of these ones. And you will see something different is created right now. This is because the range value is showing it as a measure value. So what we need to do is we simply click on the range value and change it into a dimension. And you will start seeing here the spiral is created, but all the bars are of the same size because we haven't defined the measure with which the size of the bars will change. So for that, we need to create a few more additional calculated fields. So let's start by creating a sales field. So in this scenario, what we need is window sum. So window sum for sum of sales. And then we have to divide it by two because while doing the data densification technique, we had two rules for each order, which is at zero and one. So that's why we are dividing it by two. Now we will create a duplicate of this one and that's for our total sales value. So what we will do here, so we will change the name to total sales and click OK. It's the exactly same calculation, but we are just saying total sales calculation. And then we need to create a third calculation, which is percentage calculation. And percentage calculation is nothing but our sales calculation divided by total sales calculation. So once we have these calculation, we will simply update our x and y calculation so let's go to x calculation and instead of changing the value to plus one what we will do here is we will say percentage into size parameter which we have created before and its starting point plus percentage into size. So once we put all the parentheses, we will just copy that and we will do the same thing for y-axis. And I will remove this and put it here as well. Now let's click OK and you will start seeing something different, but that's OK. So what we need to do now is make sure we go to x-axis and select compute using by order date. Same for y-axis, compute using by order date. And then we go to X axis and do the edit table calculation. And then we select sales. And in the sales, we uncheck order date. And here you go, you will start seeing our radial bar chart. And that looks pretty nice actually. In order to show the sales value on each bar, we will bring the sales value and bring it to the color shelf. And you will see the color didn't change. That's because the table calculation is compute using order date so we need to change it by range and you will see here the sales value are showing for each of these bars you can also show the filter and you can change it for different months or different years or you can add multiple years if you want to see three years you can do it that way and also with our sizing and spacing you can show the parameter and you can change the sizing and spacing and I will bring the size as well. And if you want to change it to, let's say, 500, you will see it like this, or 100 or 150. You can play around with that one. And I will keep it 100 as of now, just to make sure it looks pretty nice. And with the spacing, you can keep it five, or you can keep it six. But now you will see here nothing is changing because we haven't used the spacing calculation in the index value. So for that, we have to go into index calculation, select edit, and in here, we will simply multiply this entire value of index minus one with the size and plus okay. Once we do that, you will see here things are changing in a different way because we have done the wrong calculation for index. So instead of spacing, we have used it as a size. So change it to spacing 
and you will see how it will work. So now if you increase the size of the spacing to let's say 8, there's a spacing between each of these bar. You can keep it, in this case I will keep it let's say 4 and it looks pretty nice, right? And then you can increase the size as well to make it a little bit thicker. And also in terms of the color coding, you can select different colors you want. So in this case, if you want red and green, you can do it that way. And you can start seeing the spiral bar chart creating. And here, as I mentioned earlier, where we started from, six as the origin, right? If you change it to different values, the center point will change. So let me show you how it works. So starting point calculation. So we did it from six, right? So if we do it from 12, you will see how the starting point will change. So if I apply that, so starting point is further away from the 001 axis. So here you can change it to four and it will bring it in the center. So that way you can adjust the axis, center point, spacing, or the size. And you can use any measure. In this case, we have used sales. If you want to use any other measure, you can use that as well. And the time axis, in this case, we are using years. So you can use month, quarters, whatever you want. And here we have selected all the dates, exact dates within an year. So if you are only looking for month for last five years, you can do that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a message in the comments below. And if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel, then please do so and hit the bell icon so that you get notified immediately when I release new content. Thank you and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.